Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen. Uh, we are making some freezer meals. I've got my little helper back there having a snack, so hopefully she'll stay content for a minute. But I need to start prepping for this baby. So I went to the grocery store yesterday and I picked up a couple things to make a few freezer meals. Uh, we did get the deep freezer cleaned. <laughs> That's right. Mm. We did get the deep freezer clean and it's plugged in and on and ready to go. So I wanna get started on this. I am gonna make some more, but for today, I think I'm just gonna do a bacon potato corn chowder and put it in some like Ziplocs. And then I also want to make some apple cinnamon pancakes for this one back here. So breakfast time is a little bit easier post baby. And I also want to do some like breakfast enchilada casserole type of situation. So that's what we're gonna do today. I thought I would show you and hang out with you guys. So we're gonna start with the corn chowder. So I've got some flour, some red potatoes, onion, some bacon. I thought ranch seasoning would be good in this as far as like seasonings go. So I got one of those. Um, the recipe that I saw, I kind of looked at a few called for um, heavy cream. Aldi didn't have any, so I got half and half, and instead of getting regular corn, I got cream corn. So we're improvising here. <laughs> We've got some minced garlic and chicken broth or chicken bouillon, whichever you have. That's what I had, so that's what we're using. Let's get cooking. So I'm gonna start by washing the potatoes because obviously potatoes grow in dirt and they're really dirty. I don't think I need to explain that to anybody. But we're gonna wash potatoes and chop those up. I'm also going to use the whole pack of bacon. And this is one of those packs that's like good for recipes. The expensive bacon was on sale. I opted for this because I figured the more fat, the better, because I'm gonna cook the onions in bacon fat that renders from cooking the bacon first. So my thought process on this was get this type of bacon. It's just, I guess the odd cuts of bacon rather than your picture perfect, more expensive cuts of bacon. These are nice um, for recipes. It says on the box they're good for recipes, but that was my thought process with it. I was thinking, okay, more bacon fat and then I won't have to add butter to the flour and all of that because we would already have it in there that was way too much explanation for why I got this bacon. So we're just gonna cut up the bacon, get that thrown in a cold pan. A cold pan will render more fat from the bacon. So I'm told, I've always started things in a cold pan anyways because I think it cooks more thoroughly and more efficiently. Whereas if you throw bacon into a hot pan, the outside is gonna cook faster than like the inside. So that is just how I always cook bacon. So then once we get the bacon going, I'm gonna get the onion diced up and you wanna do these kind of small cause I'm not going to take an immersion blender or anything like that to this. So you want everything to be kind of bite sized friendly pieces. <laughs> and it turned out fine. Spoiler alert, this recipe was absolutely delicious. I will link, um, as close to this type of recipe as I can find. I obviously was just going rogue and winging this. So you can see all that bacon fat there that rendered and there's plenty to cook the vegetables in and throw the flour in and for that to soak up and make a roux. But I will find a recipe as close as I can to what I did here because I really did not. I just measured with my heart as my grandma would say and it turned out just fine. I used what I had as well. Um, I think at the beginning when I was going over the ingredients, I told you that they didn't have, what was it, full, heavy cream. They didn't have heavy cream, so I got creamed corn and I kind of improvised throughout the whole thing. And it turned out just fine. Honestly, it's soup, it's food. It, it's not that deep. So I'll find a recipe that's as close as I can. The flour ratio, I just kind of wung it. I was looking for a specific kind of texture for my roux. Also, don't forget to throw in your garlic, probably at this point. I completely forgot and I end up throwing it in later. And I don't think it makes that much of a difference, but traditionally I would have thrown the garlic in at this point to where it would cook a little bit and release into that oil and flavor the roux as well, but I, completely forgot about it. I do throw it in eventually, but I did forget. 
So I wasn't sure if I was gonna use all four of these cans. I ended up using all four because I figured it's a bacon corn chowder. It's in the name. It should be a big component in the soup. So that's where we went with this. So just plopping those in once the flour cooks out a little bit from that roux. I also want to say that this soup does not get very thick. It's not like a creamy soup. I Well, it is, but it's not. Here's the garlic that I totally forgot about. Again, it was fine. It's Cooking is not as hard or as big of a deal as people make it seem. Um, that was also a huge amount of garlic. <laughs> um, it tasted fine. It's not like it was overpowering or anything. The ranch seasoning. I will say this was such a great like shortcut as far as seasoning the soup. Just throw a ranch packet in it. It's like a creamy soup, so you've got like the, the ranch seasoning will also kind of help thicken it too, just a smidge. Um, this does not come out like a stew or anything like that as far as consistency. It is a soup. So throwing that in, throwing in some half and half. I think I show you here in a second how much I did not use that whole thing, um, but I was just eyeballing it. I wanted enough to be able to, okay, so yeah, I used uh, more than half, about three-fourths maybe, two-thirds, something like that. So then I'm just going to cut my potatoes. Uh, my plan for this was to not cook the potatoes all the way through because I was thinking I was going to put these in Ziploc bags and then throw them in a crock pot. So I didn't want the potatoes to turn to mush, but these are red potatoes and they're a little more durable than your average russet <laughs> because I'm a potato expert over here. Not really. Um, but I found that with the red potatoes, it took a while to cook and I ended up just cooking them until they were fork tender. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, we've kind of broke out a few of these freezer meals already and I did not get them out the night before and thaw them out. I honestly ended up just throwing them under some hot water to thaw them out enough to throw them in a covered pot and then heat them through. So if you are the kind of person that is like me and you're not going to remember to get them out the night before, I would cook the potatoes all the way through. And I didn't have a problem with them getting mushy or anything when we reheated the soup. So uh, take it as you will. If you know that you're going to end up putting in a crock pot and it's going to slow cook for a while, maybe cook them until they're al dente instead of fork tender. But to each their own, just be honest with yourself. <laughs> okay, I'm laughing because I thought that I was going to be so cool and just fill up these bags. One, I did not let the soup cool hardly enough. Um, let the soup cool. Let it sit there for a couple hours and chill. Uh, also, your potatoes will kind of cook a little bit as it rests. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Undercook your potatoes just a smidge. When I say fork tender, like right at that threshold of fork tender so that they don't get mushy. But if you miss that mark and cook them a little more, I don't think it's going to make or break the soup. So... I started filling up these bags. The soup was still too hot. Um, the bags didn't melt or anything like that, but my drawer in my freezer when I laid these flat to freeze did warp a little bit um, because these were so hot. <laughs> so let your soup cool completely. Don't be impatient like me and just start filling it. I also have to recruit Anthony because these bags will not stay <laughs> held up. And I thought that that empty oil container was gonna help me out and save me. Uh, I don't think it does. I'm pretty sure he has to come and help me. Uh, bottom of that uh, Dutch oven looks great too. Don't judge. I did get that to come off. Uh, just throw some water in it and let it boil for a little bit. It'll pull all that right off. What am I doing? Oh yeah, I'm recruiting Anthony at this point. They make those um, bag holders. If you know, you know. Uh, they're like green arms that hold your Ziplocs up while you fill them. I didn't get them, guys. I am just, that's a woman across the room kind of purchase. And I just, I can't justify it. It's kind of like a hand mixer. I still to this day do not have one. Um, 
every time I think, oh, I should get one, I end up just using a fork. Pop them suckers in the freezer and then just get them out when you're ready to eat. So it's actually the next morning. Yesterday got a little chaotic, but we did get the freezer meals done. They're frozen. I'll move them down to the deep freezer later, but I'm going to make the breakfast enchilada casserole type of situation. I just don't think I'm going to roll the tortillas. I think I'm gonna layer them in there because it'll be easier. And I think when we go to eat them, it'll just make more sense for us. So you need red potatoes, pork sausage, tortillas. Um, I got this avocado tomatilla salsa. I was going for salsa verde, but they didn't have any. They had this, figured it'd be the same thing. We've got some cheddar cheese, bell pepper, onion, and eggs. And then I got, um, I'll link this below, I got this pack of 20 8x8 uh, pans off of Amazon. So that's what we're going to throw these in today. Oh, I also need some cooking spray for the pans. So go ahead and get that out as well. So let's get started. Another day, another freezer meal. I really thought that I was gonna get these all done in one day and it just didn't happen. <laughs> but that's life with a toddler and when you're pregnant and you get exhausted really easily. So listening to your body and just doing what you are able to do without completely draining yourself is what we went with. <laughs> so cutting up some onions, we've got the sausage in a cold pan. Again, just like with the bacon, it'll render more of the fat and I'm gonna cook the veggies in the fat. So get the sausage going and then dice up your veggies. I start with the onions. I love, I don't love cutting onions, but I love watching people cut onions. <laughs> it's so satisfying. It's one of those weird satisfying things to watch, but Cut up the onions into, again, like bite-sized pieces because they're just gonna go into, this turns out kind of like a casserole. It's like layered, kind of like a breakfast lasagna type of situation, but with tortillas instead of noodles. It's a lot like my goop recipe. It actually is very similar to my goop recipe. If you know what that is, there's a video on my channel um, where we make that. It's like a taco casserole, but with taco meat and cheese and salsa instead of breakfast ingredients. <laughs> so cutting up the bell peppers the same way. I like my bell peppers kind of on the bigger side because I like them to not be super mushy. However, we are freezing this and reheating it. So I don't really think that it's going to make a difference. I think once you freeze them and reheat them, they're going to get a little mushy anyways. So it, it was fine. We've had these, they were delicious. Um, the avocado salsa put on top, I was a little worried about, but it turned out just fine too. Uh, when you reheat these, if you do 375 and they're thawed, the tortillas will not get crispy. But if you throw them in the oven frozen, one, they take forever because they're frozen solid. But if you do them at 400 and they're frozen, it will actually crisp up that bottom tortilla, even though you're cooking it from frozen because we put a little bit of the oil in the bottom of the pan. So that's something to keep in mind too. And not that it really matters, but here we are coming in with some potatoes. I bought one bag of red potatoes for these recipes and I think I used all of them. I don't remember, it's been a few days since I've made this and I'm doing this voiceover, so I don't remember if I used all the potatoes. I think my brain is serving me well, which I wouldn't count on. I think I used almost all of them, but I did not use that entire bag. And it was a five pound bag of red potatoes. So with the potatoes, I want to, I want to make these crispy. I don't like like regular plain cooked potatoes, like home fries. I like crispy potatoes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these up into small little cubes. And you can also fry these in a high-sided skillet or a cast iron skillet would be really good. But I end up throwing these in the oven and making them crispy, like real crispy, not burnt. Um, but yeah, you can do this in a skillet. I think the oven was honestly easier because I was already cooking so much on here, on the stove. So get your veggies thrown in once your sausage is cooked and they'll cook in that oil. And I'm gonna get the potatoes thrown in the oven, I think at 425, 450. 
and just put a little bit of spray oil on them so they don't stick. And I seasoned them with salt, pepper, and some thyme lemon salt that I had found at Aldi. It's really more thyme than it is salt. <laughs> so I go a little heavy on it, even though I put salt on it as well. It's more of just a ground thyme seasoning with some lemon in it. So I'm gonna pop the onion, nope, not onions, potatoes on a cookie sheet and get those seasoned up and ready to go in the oven. Oh, I took these at 425, 450 for about probably 30 minutes or so. Just keep an eye on them. When they're then when they look nice and crispy and done to your liking, pull them out. Also, spray more oil than you think, uh, just so they don't stick when you try and toss them. You do want to kind of mm, not mix them, but zhuzh them up halfway through or as they're cooking so that they cook evenly all around and get crispy on all sides. Starting on the eggs, I think I end up cracking probably 15 eggs or so. I use this whole carton, I end up getting some more too. And just cracking eggs. I don't think I got any shells. I think I did pretty well cracking all these eggs. I am not fancy enough to do it one handed. I can, but uh, yeah, I'm not trying to impress anybody. It's really what it is. And I end up with eggshells in there more than not when I do it that way. Uh, also using some of that half and half that I have left over from the potato soup. Threw that in there. Are you the person that puts water or milk in your eggs when you make scrambled eggs or do you just do plain eggs? I know that that's kind of a, it's a personal thing. Uh, my mom always put a little bit of milk in our eggs when she would make scrambled eggs. I, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Is it supposed to make them fluffier? Is that like the thought behind it? I don't know. I don't know. Does it stretch them? If you know, comment below and let me know because I don't know. I've just, my mom always did it. So I've always put some milk in my eggs. Anthony has always put milk in our scrambled eggs. So I've also done it without. I don't, taste wise, I don't know if it makes any much of a difference. <laughs> also using my sleeve because I'm not grabbing an oven mitt or a towel. I love these pots and pans. Also not washing that, just using the same pot to make scrambled eggs because it was already dirty and I don't wanna do more dishes. And there was still some sausage grease in the bottom so I didn't have to oil the pot or anything because it was already in there. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I love those pots and pans, but the handles get hot on them. And the lids, the lids have those same kind of silver metal handles on them and they get hot. And I don't really love that. I like the pots and pans where you can grab the handles and not burn your hands when you've been cooking with them. So these are Food Network uh, cookware that I got at Kohl's, I believe. Um, so yeah, not my favorite. They work, I like the nonstick. They don't like fall apart, but I don't like that the handles get hot. Uh, okay, now everything's out. We're just gonna do an assembly line situation. Always drinking coffee because that is just, it's in my blood at this point. So we're gonna go in with tortillas and you just wanna like make a bed. So I think I put four tortillas on each layer, except maybe the top. There's 10 tortillas in, no, not 10. There's 20 tortillas in that package there that I get at Aldi. So just make a nice bed. You kind of want to go up on the sides a little bit so everything kind of is held in together. And I did, I sprayed the bottom of these pans, yes. So it, they were a little slippery, but it was fine. I was able to kind of get them, work with them and they'll get to where you need them to be. And then just pile in your ingredients. We're going to start with the sausage and the peppers and onions. And then we're gonna go in with some eggs.
I just did, I think, two scoops of each thing. I, I stretched it, but not super far um, because I figured I could get one more out of everything that I made. So that's what I did because I was trying to get as many freezer meals as I could, but that would actually feed us. Um, I didn't want to stretch them so far that they weren't going to fill us up. So uh, sausage mixture, eggs, potatoes, cheese, and then another layer of tortilla. Okay, so yeah, I do uh, rip that last tortilla because I think this is just the top, so it's not really holding everything together. Oh, maybe I didn't do more than one layer. Because it looks here, let's see, do I go in with... Okay, yeah, so it's more of a casserole than it is like a layered lasagna situation. I thought I did more layers, but apparently I didn't, which is fine. These are delicious. We've had all of these freezer meals at this point and they're all good, spoiler alert. So go in with some cheese and then I top it with that avocado salsa. I wanted the salsa verde. I think I talked about when I was talking about the ingredients. Uh, salsa verde is my favorite for breakfast. Uh, this was good. I have no complaints. It is a little different. It's not as spicy as traditional salsa verde. This is, I'm assuming, pretty much the same thing, but it has avocado in it. I did end up making a fourth casserole as well. All right, moving on to another breakfast freezer meal. We're going to make some apple cinnamon pancakes. Um, again, not really a recipe, just kind of winging it. We've got pancake mix, applesauce. I'm gonna use what's left of this half and half um, that we have from the chowder and the eggs because what else am I gonna use it for? And then I also have this. I don't actually like it in coffee, but you know, I wanna use it. I don't wanna waste it. So I thought it would be good with the apple. Couple eggs, nutmeg, cinnamon, a big bowl, and somewhere to cook your pancakes. So I'm gonna whip this stuff up and let them cool on a drying, a drying rack, a cooling rack, and then pop them into freezer bags. So I go to our local library and I get cookbooks every once in a while and just kind of flip through and get ideas. And that's where I got the idea for this recipe. It was, I want to say just apple cinnamon pancakes or applesauce pancakes, something along those lines. But I had this caramel creamer and it was okay. I think it was an almond milk creamer. It just, I don't know. I'm really weird about my coffee in the morning. Lately, I've just been doing half and half. That was a lot of cinnamon. <laughs> uh, lately, I've just been doing half and half, but I always end up going back to like hazelnut creamer. I try different creamers and think, oh yeah, I'm gonna like it. So a long story short, or a short story along, really. Um, I had this leftover because I didn't like it in my coffee. It was really good in these pancakes. My daughter loves these. I also love these. And I will say, I don't know if I put maple syrup in the batter. I usually do when I make her pancakes because when I give her pancakes, I don't put syrup on them. Syrup, syrup, what do you say? Put it in the comments. Let me know if I'm a weirdo and I'm saying it wrong or if you say it the same way and apparently we're both weird. Um, let's see, what was I saying? Oh, so when I give her just regular pancakes, I put the syrup in the batter so that I don't have to make a huge mess. She's not even two, so it's, breakfast gets a little messy. So anything that I can do to kind of minimize the mess, it's a win for me. I used the rest of that creamer in there, actually. I am glad to have gotten rid of it, but I'm also glad that I didn't waste it, and it was really good in this recipe. Um, I will find a Pinterest recipe that's close to this if I can't find the one that I read at the library or out of the library book. I don't remember what book it was from, but uh, I kind of just... Again, eyeballed it. I was throwing stuff in until I got a pancake consistency. Also, I really like this Quizen Art. Quizen Art? Uh, yeah, that should be the brand of this. It's like a panini grill on the other side of those plates and you can take them off and flip them and then it's like a griddle. I do have a flat skillet that I normally make pancakes on, but I can only make four at a time. 
And since this was a whole box of pancake mix, I wanted to do as many as I could because it, it takes forever to meal prep pancakes, but it's always so worth it to have them ready to go in the freezer. And my daughter really likes these, so I can always count on pulling these out, popping them in the microwave for about 30 seconds, and then she's good to go for breakfast. Okay, I'm watching this back and I am thinking of the old, well, I guess it's old now, but it wasn't when I was growing up. It's called Matilda. And there's, if you know, you know, there's a part in that movie where she makes herself pancakes and it plays a very iconic song that anytime you hear it, you think of that movie. And I, it's so near and dear to my heart. So every time I make pancakes and I'm like watching it back, I think of that movie. And it's just so nostalgic to me because that was one that we watched a lot growing up and it was one of my favorites as a kid. And it always made me want pancakes. <laughs> Nothing groundbreaking here, just making pancakes. Once they're ready to flip, you flip them and then you throw more on the griddle. <laughs> I do like putting my pancakes on a cooling rack so that they don't get soggy. Um, I've put them on a plate before, but I they get weird, especially if they get a little soggy and then you freeze them and then you reheat them. They, they get a little mushy, so I definitely would do a cooling rack. Or if you don't have a cooling rack, you could probably put paper towels on a plate and put them on the paper towels and then flip them probably two minutes after you let them set so that they don't get super steamy on the bottom. Anybody else love a good mountain of pancakes? This made, I think, three freezer bags for my daughter, and we are still working on these. I am so glad to have these in the freezer. They're so easy to pop out in a hurry, and they've been a lifesaver. That's going to be it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed making some freezer meals with me. I'll link recipes below as close as I can to what I made here. And if you try them, let me know. Hopefully you do give them a try because these were all really good. My whole family enjoys these. So hopefully they were easy enough and this was entertaining for you to watch. But I'll see you guys in my next video real soon. Bye guys. Bye.